So I'd like to welcome everyone to the live tonight. We have tonight well-known author and publisher, Brother Ira Milligan. He has published many books, and one of those books just happens to be The Ultimate Guide to Understanding the Dreams That You Dream. Um, Brother Ira, would you like to say hello to everyone? Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, so I'd like to start the meeting tonight with first off just asking Brother Ira a few questions. Is that okay with you, Brother Ira? Sure, certainly. Okay. So um, number one, let's start with the dream app or the dream book. What prompted you to write a book on dreams? Back in the early, you know, mid 80s, the Lord spoke to me and told me to uh, study dreams. Uh, it all started back in 1968 when I had asked the Lord a question and he answered me in a dream and I didn't know that it was God. And later, later the day after I woke up with the dream, I talked to a friend of mine, I mentioned the dream to him and he said, that dream is from God. And I said, oh, it's just an ordinary dream. He said, no. He said, uh, I said, what makes you think it's from God? He said, boy, the Holy Spirit just moved all over me and told me that dream. <laughs> and I said, well, good. It's from God. What does it mean? He said, I don't know. So I thought, a lot of help you are. So uh, it really was a lot of help because he caused me to ask the Lord about the dream. And when I did, just instantly, the Lord gave me an interpretation of it. And I realized that God had spoke to me. And he actually answered the question that I'd asked. And so I got to think about that. And I thought, I wonder how many times I've asked God a question and he answered it in a dream but i didn't know that he was speaking to me because the dream was symbolic and had to be interpreted so i started paying attention to dreams and so i wrote my dreams down and started a dream journal and all and did it for quite a few years and then in uh like i said in the early or mid 80s the lord literally just spoke to me and uh and told me to start studying dreams which i did and then i think it was 1988 uh, I happened to be somewhere and mentioned dreams and somebody started to ask me questions. So I wound up doing a little teaching on dreams. And from that, it just kept growing and growing. So the book, the way it came about was I started, people would ask me questions and I'd write down their, their uh, questions like they would ask me, what does a bicycle mean in a dream? Or, uh, you know, what is a, a truck or a car or whatever? And uh, so I started writing down the, the interpretation, like bicycle usually has to do with work and so forth. And so I'd hand out this sheet. Well, they kept asking questions. I kept adding it to the sheet, and the sheet got to be two sheets, and then three and five and ten. And finally, I was handing out, I mean, literally a stack uh, to people who had come to the teachings. And so one day I was looking at this, literally, a, it was actually a dictionary, what it amounts to, a dream di dictionary. And uh, I was looking at it, and I realized, you know, I could add a few paragraphs to this thing and make a book out of it. So I just sat there and started writing, and I wound up writing the first book. And uh, I sent it to Destiny Image. They published it, and, and it sold out. It, I mean, just overnight. They published 5,000 copies, and I don't remember now. It wasn't six months. They were contacting me again. So we revised it, and uh, they've been publishing it ever since. And then later, I wrote a second volume. And uh, when I wrote the second volume, I had an interesting dream. I had dreamed that I won the lottery. And the winning numbers was just like uh, one, one, two, two, and then four, 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 like that. In other words, it was strange because it was just basic numbers. And, and uh, so when I woke up, I meditated on it. I realized the Lord was saying that this book you just wrote, you're going to win the lottery. In other words, it is it is almost as uh, good a chance of winning the lottery as you have to get a book published by a major publisher uh, because there's so many hundreds of thousands of books written and everybody wants it published and so they strictly go by what they think will sell and uh, they had published my first one and uh, because I paid for it and so the second one whenever they got a copy of it they wanted me to buy so many of them 3,000 I mean I told them no I ain't buying none and so they didn't publish it so I self-published it and after I self-published it they called me the main publisher called me and said, we want that book. And I said, well, you can't have the book unless you raise my royalties on the other book. And in other words, I drove a hard bargain, but I knew I could because I had had that dream that I won the lottery. And I knew God was telling me that that book 
they were, it was going to win. And see, the reason the numbers were important because the first five chapters of that second book is nothing but uh, explanation of how God uses numbers and dreams. And so I knew that's what the Lord was saying. And so sure enough, they, they came to my terms, and so they published the second one, and then they combined it together to make the book that you mentioned, The Ultimate Guide. So The Ultimate Guide is actually the two dream books that I've written combined. Now, Robert Gordon and I right now are working on possibly producing a third book, uh, and it would be taken primarily from uh, the newsletter that I wrote a newsletter for 20 years. Uh, once a month, I never missed a month in 20 years. So it was 240 newsletters. And uh, I, in many of those, I put what I call the dreamer's corner. And I put a little small article on dream interpretation. And so uh, Robert and I are talking about compiling those into a book form and putting out a third book, which I think would be very interesting because it's a unique way, uh, you know, to present dream interpretation. But basically, that's what happened. And uh, you know, there was kind of an evolution of it. The, the dream book uh, that people have now has actually been edited, I mean, excuse me, revised twice. Uh, and so the latest one out is is, uh, is well revised. I added uh, about 50 cross-references and over 100 new, new symbols to the last revision when I made it. And, uh, and that's the one that's in the ultimate guide. So people with the ultimate guide have the latest, uh, latest revision of the dream book itself. So anyway, that's basically how it all came to, came about. Okay. Well, um, the second question I have for you is, how did you come up with the meaning for the symbols in your book? Okay, it all started with my own dreams. And I'm, I have been a student of the biblical symbolism since I got saved. I mean, I, I cut my teeth on Old Testament uh, laws and parables and all. And uh, back 60 something years ago when I got saved. And so it was a natural thing for uh, to understand symbols because first, uh, when I was young, I loved science. I studied animals and plants and, you know, in-depth uh, chemistry. Uh, any science, I was uh, an avid addict about it. And uh, so I had a lot of knowledge of the natural things. So when the Lord put, say, the uh, uh, elephant and dream or something I knew already the characteristics of the different creatures you know whether it be a fox or uh, a coyote or a wolf or whatever so all that helped because your primary meaning that of uh, dream symbols is the inherent characteristics so if you know the inherent characteristics of something uh, you you I mean, your big step towards being able to understand how God uses that for instance whenever Jesus was here he called Herod a fox and uh, if you want to know why, a fox is real clever at avoiding a trap. And uh, they're, they're really scheming and so forth. And Herod was a politician, and politicians are real clever at avoiding traps. You can't, you ask them questions, they talk 30 minutes, never answer, and act as though they did. And uh, they're very, uh, you know, their they're characteristics. And so Jesus called them a fox, and it's because that's where a fox is. And uh, so if you understand the characteristics of the various creatures, you can see why God used them in dreams. And, and the same thing applies. I'm also a pilot, and the Lord gives me many dreams with, uh, you know, flying airplanes and being in airplanes and so forth, or difficult landing and all kinds of things like that. The okay. reason for crashes and so forth. So I have, I've had a pretty wide background, and uh, and so the Lord just drew on that to teach me. And then I've helped uh, hundreds and hundreds of people interpret their dreams. And so when they tell a dream, and the way you interpret dreams is you don't just jump at it and say, well, this means this and this. You ask questions. And so when somebody has a dream and they tell you, for instance, I had a woman one time says, what does a German mean in a dream? You know, a person who's a German. And I said, well, look, that depends on you. Because if your grandmother was in the Holocaust and uh, you know, your grandfather was killed, a German would probably mean something totally different to you than it would to me. Because to me, a German is a, a incredibly clever, ingenious person. The, the Germans invented half of what we use. And uh, in World War II, the, the, uh, their, their aircraft was incredibly advanced. Uh, von Braun was a, a German, and that's where our rocket program comes from. I mean, those people had incredible uh, ability. And I've been to Germany, and, and I've seen 
some of the handiwork of the cars over there, and it, it is it's incredible. It looks like they're cars come out of a machine shop. Mm -hmm. And so I admire the Germans, but uh, and I happen to be 16% German myself, but uh, they're meticulous and, and very detailed people, uh, hardworking people. And uh, so to me, a German would be an industrious person, a person who uh, is very skillful and so forth, but to someone else, it may be a totally different meaning. So you have to learn to ask questions. And uh, and find out what something means to them because when when uh, God created Adam and then He created the animal, whatever Adam called the animal, that's what God named them. So when the Lord talks to you, He uses your vocabulary, not His. But if He used His, you wouldn't have a clue what He's talking about. <laughs> it, it'd be like you talking to a, a, a physicist or a, uh, you know a Einstein genius, and him talking about theory of relativity, and you, you wouldn't have a clue. And uh, it does a whole lot more than an Einstein. So God has to talk our language, and so He knows what things mean to us. And so when He gives us a dream, He uses that. So what something means to you may be totally different to me. And so it would be wrong for me to assume that what the way I see something would be the way you see it. And so and the Lord knows how you see it, so He uses your description. So in my dream book, that's the reason there's so many alternate possibilities if I, i'll give a, a for instance a bicycle a bicycle many times it's very common for it to mean work because you have to pump that thing and uh, so if god wants to talk to you about you trying to work your way to heaven he might put you on a bicycle and you you climb a hill and man you can't want to make it or whatever uh on the other hand a bicycle is used for delivering paper newspaper and so you know you could be the paper boy or girl and uh so you can see it, it depends on how it's used in the dream, what the symbol means to you, and so forth. So uh, basically, many years of experience helping others write my own dreams down, pay close attention to uh, the way dreams are, uh, dream symbols are used in the Bible. All of those things help. And so that's basically where the dictionary uh, comes from and in the dream book. Okay. Um, so do you have a dream that you could share with us that... Um, that the Lord had given you and you really didn't know what he meant at the time and how um, he used those symbols and things to speak to you? I sure can. Uh, many years ago, I was in Texas and I had a dream that was very vivid. I still remember it to this day. And I, I didn't have a clue what it was trying to tell me, but it was a vivid dream. I remembered it very well. And so two years later, I was in a meeting and I heard a man talking or teaching and all of a sudden, this dream just didn't you know, it was almost like a ticker tape. It just come back to my memory. And and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm listening to this guy who obviously didn't know what he was talking about. And uh, this dream, and I, I was reminded of this dream. And so I'm puzzled over it. And uh, I'll tell you the dream in a minute. And so the next morning, I woke up and I sat up on the side of my bed and I have a, a, a glass front gun case. And I don't have it anymore. But at that time, I had a, a shotgun, a, uh, a Beretta shotgun that had engraving in it and a superposed gun and a very expensive gun. And anyway, I set up and I, my eyes fell on that shotgun. And the Lord said, what causes a person or makes a person buy an engraved shotgun when a plain shotgun would kill the game just as dead? And I thought for just a second or two, and I thought, oh, well, self-glorification. And when I said that, all of a sudden I understood the dream. I understood why I, God reminded me of it. So forth. Now I'll tell you the dream and, and the application. First, I dreamed that I was looking out a window and I saw a hawk flying. And uh, and I, I love birds and all, so I can identify with me. And so I'm watching this hawk and uh, I saw it light on a limb. But when it lit on this limb, I had a pair of binoculars and I'm looking at it. And I'm trying to focus them, and and I, they, it's out of focus. And I kept working with it until finally I focused in. And just when I focused in, the hawk spread his wing, dropped to the ground, and as he did, he became a full-grown man with a suit on. And so he knew that I had seen him because I had, my binoculars had come into focus. And so he knew that if he walked away, it would look suspicious. So instead, he walked towards me. To make it to kind of disarm me, so to speak. 
And uh, so he walked and he knocked on the door and I told him to come in. So he came in and he had a shotgun in his hand and it, it was an engraved shotgun. And uh, so he had this gun and I looked at him and I said, hunting, I suppose. And of course, I knew he was the hawk that had come, you know, to the ground. And he mumbled something I didn't understand. And so I said it again. I said, hey, you've been hunting. He said, uh, yes. I said, do you mind if I see your gun? He handed it to me. And it was a beautiful gun, well engraved, but the, the end of it, I looked at the muzzle, and it was very, very small. It looked like a big caliber gun, but instead it was very tiny. No power, in other words. And and I, I shouldered the gun, and I'm, you know, a hunter, so I'm used to go. I shouldered the gun, and it was loose, which would be a dangerous gun to shoot. And so I handed it back to him, and I said, you better get a good gunsmith to look at that gun because it's dangerous. And uh, I handed it to him. And uh, and I woke up. So that's the dream, and I, I didn't I didn't know what it meant until I sat on the side of the bed and I looked and I saw that gun, and I answered God's question that it is for self glorification, and I realized at that instant that the man that I had seen the night before teaching that didn't know what he was talking about was the, the man that was in the dream. He was the sorcerer. I see a hawk as a predator and a sorcerer as a predator. And the hawk became the man with a defective gun with no power, but it looked real fancy. And that's typical sorcery. You remember Simon Marcus in the Book of Acts? He greatly deceived the people that he was some great one, self glorification, you see. And so whenever the Lord gave me that clue, I instantly knew that the man that I had seen was the fulfillment of that dream. And I also knew that whenever the next time I saw it, which was the next night, uh, I was going to have to rebuke him. Uh, I mean, I just knew that. And so that's the reason God had given me the dream. So the following night, he was in the in the church room. And as usual, he was doing his, he had, he had false doctrine. And he was teaching. And so I listened for a minute and I questioned him. I said, well, you're saying this, but what about this scripture? Because this scripture refutes what you say. Well, he got instantly angry instead of responding properly. He got instantly angry and defensive. And uh, so when I ministered prophetically that night, uh, when I, as I walked up to him, the Lord spoke to me and he said, speak plainly. And so I gave him a very sound rebuke, uh, called him what he was, and uh you know, and, and just exposed him in front of everybody that the man was a deceiver, that he had deceitful doctrines. Uh, he was there for his own glory, not for God's glory, the whole bit. And it was all because of the dream that I knew exactly how to handle the situation. And uh, and God spared the people as a result because he was deceiving the people. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. So what made you want to put together this app for dream, for journaling? Say that again. Now. What sorry. made you want to put together an app for dream oh, journaling? Back in the 90s, uh, after I had got that book, uh, first, the first dream volume uh, uh, published and had revised it, it the computers were beginning to be popular. And uh, I got my first computer in 1979. So I went way back in computers. And uh, I knew that would be very valuable, and so I, I did my best to find. I spent about two years trying to find someone that could do what you've done, uh, that could take and tie the book and the dictionary symbols and all with a computer so that when somebody typed in their dream into the computer, maybe they could click on a word, a keyword. Let's say they dreamed about a dog, and if they click on dog, then it would go to the dictionary and bring it up for them or whatever. That was the idea that I had, and I could not find anybody that could write the program or do it. And I understand now things are a whole lot more developed and all, but uh, but I finally gave up on it, and that was back in the 90s. So it, it's been long and coming. It's greatly needed. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't know yet how your program works because uh, I'm not real skilled with this kind of stuff <laughs> as far as that is, but uh, maybe I'll learn how one day. But uh, I can see the tremendous value of it because, for one thing, I have Bible programs, and uh, when I look up a scripture, I can click on any word and instantly it will go to the Strong's concordance and uh, give me uh, not just the Strong's. I write about five different 
uh, dictionaries and lexicons in it. And I can go to any one of them and just with you know, instant. It's so fast that I can do on the computer studies that used to take me uh, days. I can do it in minutes. And uh, things that took weeks, I can do it in a day. Yes. Uh, and, and there was just a time machine. It is reduced the amount of time that it takes for me to do some in depth study, especially since I arrived. I've written a steam book. So, uh, you know, you have to do a lot of research and all and uh, look up a lot of scriptures. And because I strictly write nonfiction uh, commentary type books and so forth. So, uh, so anyway, I know the tremendous value it is on Bible programs. And so I just never could see why somebody couldn't come up with and do the same thing uh, with Dream because uh, it'd be tremendously valuable. Yes, sir. Okay, Brother Ira. Well, um, I think I have the Zoom fixed. So can you see the screen now? Uh, are you talking to me? Yes, sir. On on the Zoom app, can you see the screen? I can see you and I can see me, but uh, now you're talking about on the phone or on the computer? On your Let's computer. See. On the computer, your... I can see you and I can see me. And I can see your, your wiki docs and projects. Okay, together. good, That's good. good. That's what you're looking at. All right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. um, I did have somebody text me and tell me that they couldn't post a comment on the live. So if you have a comment, you can send it to my messenger and uh, I will try to respond to that if you have any questions. So let's get started. I want to show you how the app works and uh, how to get started with it. So the first thing that you need to do is you're going to um, download what is called the Notion app. And it is free. It doesn't cost anything, but you do have to download it. So to do that, you're going to go to notion.so or notion.com. Either one will work. And in the top right corner, you're going to see get Notion for free. So we're going to do that tonight just so I can show you how to do this. Um, so I'm going to sign up. Let me just enter my information. Let's see. Um, what did I want? Southern snapshots by debbie at gmail.com so i'm going to continue with an email and then i'm going to um they just sent me an email to i mean uh, once you do that they're going to send you a temporary sign up code you can see here so let me get that out of my email real quick and give me just a second i had all this set up Oh, Lord, that's a long one. So I'm going to paste the code in there, and then I'm going to click on Create New Account. So that created a new account for me. And then they're going to ask you a few things. So I'm just going to tell them my name is Debbie Bailey. And I'm going to create my own password. <clears throat> and then agree to marketing. So... Once you do that, you're going to click continue, and this is just going to be for personal use, and you're going to choose continue. And once you do that, voila, you have the Notion template. You can go through these instructions and learn how to use this template if you want to, but right now I'm just going to click OK. All right, once you're signed up and you have this Notion app uh, open, what you're going to do is I, I can send you the link to purchase the actual app. It's $34.95. And so once you buy this, it's going to take you, it's going to send you an email. In the email that you get, you're going to get the PDF that has instructions. It's basically what I'm teaching you now. You'll get the PDF instructions and there will also be a link to the um, Notion template so that you can add it to your actual Notion app. So to do that, once you click on that link, you're going to come to what looks like this page. You can click around in it and look at it and everything, but it, it doesn't really work because it's just a template to show you what it looks like. So to go ahead and um, download this template in the top right corner, you're going to see what it says duplicate. You have to make sure that you're actually logged into your Notion app like we just did. 
and then you're going to click duplicate. And what that does is it's going to add this to your Notion app. You have this little bar to the left where you can add tons of tons of tons of stuff. I love this little app. So it, it's it's more useful for than just the dream journal. But you can hide the, the actual left column as well. So, all right. This is called the dashboard. And on your dashboard, you have the dreams. These are databases. The dream database, the people database, and a symbol database. You also have your last 10 most recent dreams here. Of course, this doesn't have much in it because it's the actual um, the template. Then you also have symbol use, emotion use, and people use, and, and contact us. So I'm going to come back to this page in a little bit so I can actually show you something that's on there. So we're going to first go to the Dreams database. In the Dreams database, you have two views. You have the gallery view and you have the table view. In the gallery view, you see the actual, it's a little card is what it is. It'll show you the name of the dream, the date you dreamed it, and any um, emotions that you tagged in the dream. You also have the table view. So if you want to just, if you're a table viewer, then you can just view all your dreams in table form. To add a new dream, you are going to click on new and it'll default to the, um, what we have set as the default template in here, but you can choose, let me get this out of the way. So you can choose many different colors for your templates. I use colors to kind of set the mood for my dream. If it's a dark dream and worrisome, <laughs> I'll usually use the black template. template. If, it, if it's blue, you know, if it's a good dream, sometimes I'll use blue. It just depends. And, you know, you can set the colors to mean whatever you want to for your dream. So let's just add a turquoise template real quick. You'll notice that when it opens up that you have the dreamer and the date. And you also have 14 more properties. And you'll notice down here, this little icon, it's spinning. It's loading some stuff for us. So I'm going to open up this 14 more because we're going to fill this out as we go along. Under Dreamer, you can add yourself as the Dreamer. If you're somebody like Ira <laughs> or myself that, you know, sometimes you're interpreting dreams for other people, you can actually add somebody else here. If I wanted to add Debbie Bailey here, I can do that and just click on create. So you can add as many dreamers as you want to if you, you know, interpret for other people. So you're going to enter the date that you dreamed the dream. Then if you have people in your database, um, if you read Brother Ira's book, you're going to notice real quickly that he, he says that when you dream of other people in a dream, a lot of times God is trying to talk to you about a characteristic that this person may have. In other words, if they're a giver or if they're nosy or <laughs> if they're critical or any of those things that it may, it may be a reflection of you or something about them in you that God's trying to deal with. I hope that, did I say that right, Brother Ira? I think so. Okay. <laughs> So you can tag people. So I hear I have Nancy Nosy. So let's just do um, Johnette James. Let's just say James for now, if I can type. And see, I'm just going to add Johnette, Johnette here, okay? She's not in my actual um, people template, so I'm going to add her. So here we have emotions. We have tons of emotions in here that you can choose from. And um, if you go through here, you can just peace you know I, I my my dream brought me peace I felt protected you know just anything like that category if you want to add categories to your dreams you can I don't normally use that that's why I just have dream there and going through brother Ira's book also he has application events location and subject of dream these are text fields that you can add whatever you want to these fields here you can determine if it's a dream or a night vision. You can um, write down whether it's literal or symbolic because, you know, there are different kinds of dreams. Whether the dream is repetitious or not. 
If the dream is repetitious, let's just say you kind of dream the same thing over and over and over, then, you know, you can document that it is repetitious. And down here under related dreams, you can actually tag another dream that it might be a repetition of um, under that area. Under time frame, whether it's past, present, or future. And in the book, he gives you a lot of ideas how to determine that. For instance, if you're on the back porch, it's probably in the past. Is, is that what you said, Brother Ira? In the back yes, porch? Yes. Okay. If you're yes. on the front porch, it could be the future. You know, those kind of things. The sub, uh, of course, the symbols. This is, this is where it gets good. So when you have your dream, you've entered your dream, there's symbols in your dream. So let's just say I dreamed about a car. Um, give me some other uh, symbols to add, Brother Ira. Maybe a dream you've had or something. All right, and let's say you have uh, your church people with you, um, church children with you. So in, church. In, in the car. Uh, no, people. In other words, when you're dreaming about a vehicle, usually there's a rider. And so you pay attention to who's in the vehicle with you because that's the just in Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. So what about another symbol maybe in a dream? If you were dreaming about a car, um what about the, a wreck maybe huh what about let's say uh well yeah you could do that and then uh uh in that case you might want to pay attention to where the wreck takes place or uh you know is it a, is it a train wreck car wreck uh is it a plane wreck uh mm -hmm. what type wreck it is an auto wreck okay uh, you know there's so many things if, if it's a single single car wreck or is it say you've been t-boned at intersection those kind of things okay uh, in other words you need details all right because that, that's where the message is in the detail okay so we tagged two things here these are two dream symbols in the book and what i'm going to do once i filled out this upper section here we're just going to hide these properties because we don't really care about seeing them anymore this is where we get into the the rubber meets the road <laughs> <laughs> um, so at the top, here's where you'll enter your dream. So you just start typing your dream there. You can just highlight over what's there and just start typing. Once you've entered your dream, you can see down here, these two symbols we entered, it actually pulled these tags in for us. So we can see some of the things that these can represent according to um, the symbols Brother Ira has. Uh, life, person, or ministry for a car. Now, there's a lot more to this, so bear with me. But as far as tags, these are these are like quick, a quick look or a quick view. And once you kind of get into his symbols and learn them, you really won't need to go into the actual symbol itself to read everything, but you can. You see how when you hover over something, you have this that pops up, says open. You can go right to the symbol here. So let's just do that. So once we go into here, um, you can see there's some hidden properties here as well where you can see the tags and um, those such things. But if you scroll down, let me get this out of the way again. If you scroll down, this is some of um, the things that Brother Ira has, which is basically what I put under the tags. But he also has see also boat for more information. He has the scriptures that help you to kind of understand where he got that from. And what I want to do is I want to go back to um, the auto wreck. I believe, uh, I think auto wreck was under the, I know it was in there, Brother Ira. Did I click on the wrong one twice? Let me go back to my gallery view. Please. Oh, okay, car. I think I click. Okay. Yeah. So when you get to um, this one that he wrote up on the car, there's a lot of see also's here. Then you have your scriptures. Then you have some of the other things that he was describing earlier, convertible, uh, auto breakdown, a new car, some of those things that are in the book. Um, so you can kind of go deeper into what the symbol might mean and you can read more up on the just the one symbol and see where it carries you then let me get back down here if if you don't want this blocking your view you can always 
open and full page where that's all that you see. Or you can just keep it, you know, simple in the middle. And down at the bottom, you can see people that you've tagged. And if you've added any characteristics, let's just say she's a very creative person. You can add whatever um, symbols that you want to here, you know. And so anytime you pull her up in your dream, um, you're going to automatically already see the characteristics. And then once you've got the interpretation to your dream, you can uh, enter that down here at the bottom. So that's actually how you enter a dream. And I want to go back to the home page. So on the home page, you can see now we have two dreams instead of one. Under people, here, this is where you're going to find the people that you've added and any characteristics that you've added for them. And it's, it's basically the same thing. You can click a new symbol here and add John Doe and add, um, he's sarcastic, let's just say. You can add more than one if you need to. So that's how the people um, database works. And then you have the symbols database. Under the symbols database, we have the gallery view. In each gallery view, you have the name and those tags, as many as you can see in here. They only give so much um, area for each card. So you can see a lot of them anyway. You can also look at all symbols and you have the ability over here to the right for this little magnifying glass to search through the symbols. Um, Brother Iris' book is um, divided up into chapters. So he has a chapter on animals, birds, fish, and insects. So they would all be found here under this section. So you can scroll through those or you can search through those. Then you have buildings, rooms, and places. You have colors. You have directions, metals, numbers, people, relatives, and trades, vehicles and parts, and the biggest chapter of all, miscellaneous. That one took a while. <laughs> um, and like I said, you can search through any of those. Now, going and, you know, like I said, um, one of the symbols that I like to look at, let me go back here and just search for house. I like to, house is a, a good example. Where did it go? Hold on. Buildings, rooms, and places. House. This is the one I like to look at because it's so much in here. So it says you have, um, see also foundation a movie van or grandmother. Then you have your scriptures and there are um, a lot of other things in here. For instance, um, home can represent heart as in home is where the heart is, your identity or roots. Uh, old house could represent the past inheritance such as one's, one, one's grandfather's or grandmother's religion, ways or temperament, established tradition. And then you have scriptures here as well to follow. Um, I really like the way Brother Ira has put his symbols and things together in the book, and they are very helpful. So let's go back to the dashboard. What I like about the dashboard is you can filter by symbols, emotion, and use. So let's just say if you, um, want to see what dreams you have a car in. So it pulled up that dream we just added that had a car in it. So if you are like me, I have hundreds of dreams. So if I wanted to see, you know, what dreams I'm dreaming about a car in, it would pull every one of them up that I had tagged a car in. Um, the same thing for emotions. What did we tag a while ago? Was it um, secure? I think, or peace. No. What was it, Brother Ira? That peace. Peace. Yeah. Peace okay. and protect. protect yeah. Okay. So let me find peace. I, you can search for it. So peace. So now you can see the dream that has peace in it. 
or dreams if you have it in more than one. And you can also filter by people. So let's just say Johnette James, we want to see the dreams that she's in. So it will filter by those dreams. And then down at the bottom, we have an uh, email where you can contact us. And if you need any assistance, just my email where you can send to me and um, I'll try to help you the best I can. If you want these um, filters to stay here, you just click save for everyone. Uh, otherwise, when you come back, there's not going to be anything in there. So and, and that's usually fine because you, you're, you're usually only searching for a reason for a certain um, symbol, emotion or people in your dreams. And that is pretty much the dream app. Do we have any questions? Let me see. Junior, I, I think. have a comment. Sir? I have a comment. It's incredible. You have a comment? The, yes. I see. The, what you've done here is incredible. I mean, it's, it, this is what you've done is exactly what I tried to find somebody could do literally 30 years ago. <laughs> and you have accomplished it because it, it, you're doing everything in this that I had in mind. In fact, more even than what I had envisioned. So I really like this. Thank you so much. Um, I kind of shudder at sharing my, hold on, I want to open this up just to kind of give you all an idea of what it would look like. This is my dream journal. So let's just go to my database under dreams. So y'all can see I dream a little bit. <laughs> Good Lord. Usually when I send one of my dreams to Brother Ira, he's like, oh, no. <laughs> but uh, he's been so very helpful to me. So it's um, he's really been a blessing in my life, especially when it comes to dreams and, and prophecy. And Brother Ira, we really appreciate you so much. And I'm so thankful that you joined tonight. Um, I just want to leave it with y'all. Oh, wait, let's see. Uh, Lord Jr. says, uh, since I got permanent disability, I've been dreaming. I am hard at work at my former employment. I wake up tired from running here and there and yonder in my dreams. I don't rightly know what it is, uh, what is up unless I have a sense of urgency to be about the father's business. That is his calling upon my life. Um, Brother Ira, do you have any any uh, input for that? I, I'd have to be able to ask specific questions to be able to help her much. But uh, there's, remember this, the Bible says dreams can come from multitude of business. So if you're really concerned with something in your mind, you can generate a, a dream that's not from God. It's not the, what I teach people is never ignore a dream. But that does not mean that every dream is from the Lord, because even a dream that's from your own soul is important because it's it's telling you there's something in there. It's like if you driving down the highway and the red engine light comes on, you don't just try to shut the light out. You, you check and see why it came on. Right. Uh, if your elbow's hurting you, your elbow can't talk to you, but it can communicate through pain where your soul can commu communicate through dreams. And so your dreams can come from God. They can come actually from the devil, although a praying Christian that's faithful to the Lord. You don't have to much worry about that uh, because your your spirit filters that out. But as far as your own soul, your own soul can generate a dream. And uh, and so a person like her that uh, used to work hard and all, and all of a sudden become disabled, uh, it can be a desire to be back in that environment. Uh, it can, you know, there was just more than one reason for that type of dream. So you'd have to talk personally to the person, and uh, it's what we call in in dream interpretation. We call it dream work. You, you all, you all, everybody should have a dream partner, somebody that knows them, and you, you know, they know one another. They are they have mutual respect for one another, and uh, and they know how to keep one another's secrets. And so whenever you you have a dream, you call your dream partner. And they help work your dream out because they know you and so they uh and vice versa. It's very hard to interpret your own dreams, much easier to interpret someone else's because 
uh, someone else could look at it and say, well, it's obvious, you know, that this is what God said to you. And you'll think, well, why didn't I think of that? You didn't think of it because God designed us to need one another. We're yes, supposed sir. to be, we're not supposed to be independent and we're not supposed to be dependent. We're supposed to be intradependent where each respects and works together to support one another, encourage one another, help one another. And so God designed the body. Uh, my hand washes my face and uh, and feeds uh, my body and so forth. Uh, put my shoes on and so forth. But on the other hand, I don't walk with my hands. My shoes do that. My feet do that. And so you can see that God designed the body so that each member cares for the other members. And so God deliberately designed it that way so that when he gives you a dream, you can't always interpret your own dream. And uh, so sometimes it really helps to have a dream partner, somebody that trusts you and you trust them and you do what you call dream work. And uh, you just talk it out. And, and I have... I have friend like a pastor friend up in Michigan, and he will call me, and I don't just instantly try to tell him what his dream means. I start asking him questions, you know, because I know him pretty well. I know he's he's a, a very active. He's an apostolic pastor and a very influential in the politics of his era area, and uh, I know all that. So I can ask him specific questions until we home in on the application of the dream. Proper interpretation invariably is de determined by proper application. So if you don't apply the dream properly, you will misinterpret it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, back to her case, Jeremiah 29, 8 says, don't be deceived by the dreams that you cause to be dreamed. So if you are if you want something bad enough, you'll dream of getting it. Or if you fear something, you'll, you'll dream that's trying to attack in the night. Uh, in other words, your own soul can gener generate dreams, your desires or fears and so forth. So you have to separate that. You have to learn to be unbiased and look at it objectively and say, okay, uh, what is this dream telling me? Is it a God dream? Is it a soul dream? Uh, it, there's even body dreams. Uh, Isaiah 29 talks about uh, you going to sleep, you're hungry when you go to sleep, you dream that you eat, but you wake up and you're famished. Uh, but in other words, your body is hungry, and so it, it generates a dream that says, feed me. And uh, and people that don't believe that, all you have to do is go on about a 21-day fast. Now, I guarantee you somewhere's about 15 <laughs> days. So, a dream about milkshake and hamburgers, you know, so, uh, so your body will talk to you. And so, you you know, you have to always discern uh, the application of a dream, the source of a dream, as well as the interpretation of the dream. So there's more than one thing to look at here and what you've got put together here it definitely can be a tremendous asset because it it makes so much information so readily available almost instantly and it's, it's amazing really thank you so much um i appreciate you allowing me to do it for you um so brother ira if someone wants to get a hold of your book the ultimate guide to understanding the dreams you dream where would they go Send it to my webpage, and the simplest way to find it is iramilligan.com. And uh, just go to that, and Roy just got through adding uh, more books to it. Uh, I've written 16 books, and uh, there's still one or two left to put on there, but uh, he will be uh, he'll, he'll be putting them. Now, can they see me right now on Facebook? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this book right here is my newest book is called Ask for the Angel. I don't know if the glare is on it or not. But uh, yeah, we can this see book it. right here can transform your prayer life. Uh, I, I highly uh, encourage you to get it. It's the latest book I've written. And uh, and to encourage you even more, I'm actually going to expand this book because there's been tremendous demand for this since it came out. And uh, so it's like I've been, I've been literally mailing several every day going to the post office. Well, mail um, me one, Brother Ira. I'll send you the money for it. <laughs> well, it's uh, uh, it's Ask for the Angel is the name of it, and uh, it's uh, it, it'll it'll revolutionize your prayer life and really your life because the angels are ready to do uh, th their work, but it, it, it's not automatic. And too often, uh, the church has not we've not been taught properly concerning angels, how to work with them, and what they uh, are willing 
and capable of assisting us in. And uh, this book answers a lot, a lot of questions about uh, working with angels and min being ministered to by angels, and uh, including your family and so forth. So, very, very valuable uh, book for such a time as this. Okay, right. All right. Well, if anybody doesn't have any questions, I believe that's going to be the end of our service. I don't, um, or our broadcast, I don't see any questions, but that's not saying there aren't any. I, I just hadn't figured out how to do Facebook and Zoom together and then get everybody's picture on the same thing at the same time, but I'm going to figure it out, y'all. So um, thank you for everybody for joining tonight, Brother Ira. I appreciate you, and I thank you, you and Sister Judy. Y'all have been such a tremendous help to me, and I just love y'all. God bless you. Love you, too. So. All right. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Okay.